Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I presume for some of us rather good morning or good evening. Mm -hmm. And special thanks for those who are in the middle of the night, probably, and who has chosen to be with us instead of having a rest. Thank you. Uh, it is a great honor for me to start the panel titled Smart Cities, Smart People. Do we know how to ensure our security? My name is Maciej Siciarek. I'm the head of cybersecurity innovations and development department at NASC, National Research Institute, public institution that has important role uh, in Polish cybersecurity environment. IGF was expected to meet all of us in Poland, in Katowice, but due to the problem of pandemic that we are facing now all over the world, we are meeting online. online. I hope we are not yet fed up with number of online meetings, and I also hope no technical issues will disturb us today. This panel is organized by NASC together with Samsung Electronics Polska, uh, one of our strongest partners in cybersecurity. We do together a lot as well in area of innovations in cybersecurity as on the field of in education and rising security awareness. So I pass the floor now for a while to my colleague Olaf Krynicki from Samsung Electronics Polska, who will moderate this session with me. Welcome, Olaf. Take the floor or rather take the screen. Uh, thank you very much, Maciej. Thank you very much for having me in this panel uh, as the second moderator. Uh, I think that cybersec aspects are very, very uh, critical uh, these days. Uh, my part will be focused on uh, smart cities, smart city destination. What is smart city today? What's going to be in the future? So thank you very much uh, once again. Uh, and I'm looking forward for the uh, uh, further discussion. Uh, Maciek, if you uh, could uh, introduce uh, our great uh, panelists today. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Olaf. Uh, before I will introduce our guests, uh, one technical remark for the audience. Uh, during the session, your microphones will be muted, but we invite you to use Q&A chat room and write your questions, which will be addressed during Q&A session at the end of the panel. Uh, you can address your questions uh, to specific speaker or ask generally to all panelists who will decide who will answer. Uh, so. It's my pleasure to welcome such distinguished guests uh, who join us today from far and near as panelists. I wish we could host you in person, but you have to take rain check on that. Let me invite them. Len House from US State Department, Senior Technology Advisor, Office of the Coordinator for Cyber Issues. Hello, Len, welcome. Hello, thank you. And uh, Kilian Mitteweger, BSI Germany, uh, Cybersecurity in Smart Home and Smart City section. Herzlich willkommen, Kilian. Yeah, thank you. Hello. We are Hello, still Kilian. waiting for Theo Blackwell, uh, Chief Digital Officer for London. I hope he will join us. Uh, he's a member of the London Mayor's Office. Uh, is Theo with us? Not yet, I suppose. I have just, this is host speaking. I have just upgraded Theo. He will be with us shortly. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. And to continue, Dariusz Lasotsky, a former local government representative in Warsaw, with more than 10 years of experience in local administration in capital of Poland. Welcome, Dariusz. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hello. And last but not least, as usually, Konrad Fiołek, a local government representative Vice Chair of City Board from Rzeszów, capital of Subcarpathian region in Southeast Poland, with the region with dynamically growing economy. Uh, welcome, Dariusz. Hello to everyone. So, Olaf, the screen is again yours. Do proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, welcome again. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, welcome you. Uh, I believe personally that this panel will be very interesting for all our 
uh, for all who will listen to us uh, this evening today, uh, because in some this is a global uh, global panel, so uh, everyone can hear us all around the world. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, today um, we are struggling with uh, many issues. However, today we'll be focusing on uh, on smart cities and uh, smart city future. I would like to. To open the first round, uh, because Marching and I, we divided uh, our uh, moderation into two parts. The first one will be easy one, <laughs> and it's going to be with me. And the more difficult, uh, tougher one will be with Maciej, because he will be focus. Uh, he will focus his uh, his part on the cybersec uh, aspects uh, in smart cities uh, in data protection. And I would like to talk with you uh, just a little bit with all of you. We have uh, just uh, a few minutes for, for, for uh, each of us about smart city. So uh, as you know, our cities are like changing all the time. They're like, they're, like growing, developing, there are lots of uh, uh, new buildings, uh, new equipping to devices. And basically the cities are becoming more and more digital. Yes. And, uh, transformation of, uh, of city started a long time ago. And uh, uh, Boyd Cohen, who is an academic, a, a guy who is very much focused on smart city research, he created kind of uh, uh, evaluation that uh, he divided that s s smart city from one, uh, from one data to three to all. And the smart city one all is like, uh, uh, it took place when we were inspired by new technologies. Then we went through uh, the, scissor, the scissor role of uh, public administration. And, and then uh, right now, I would say uh, we are in a time when uh, inhabitants, they play major role in creating, defining how smart city looks like and should look like. And my question is actually to, to, to you, gentlemen, where are we today with the smart cities? Uh, uh, can I can I can I start with with Len with this question? Where are we today with the smart cities? Actually, oh, thank you. Uh, that's a really interesting question. I, I just want to um, start off by by saying, you know, I'm I'm in the State Department. Uh, I've been there for at least ten years now in the uh, Cyber Coordinator's Office. Um, uh, I've had a forty year technology uh, career as an engineer in the private sector. Uh, primarily focusing on everything from semiconductors, software, telecom, and internet. I've been uh, involved with the internet since the 80s. And I think there's a relevant uh, history question uh, with re respect to this uh, smart cities e evolution. Because um, I think, you know, as we looked at the internet, uh, say, starting in the 80s, we, we, you could almost say we've had internet 1.0 and 2.0, and we've been through these generations of internet. But I think the the evolution it's a it's a complex evolution and I and cities have been of course evolving since the cities started and I think uh, what we're seeing now is particularly in this digital space is is this uh, is this uh, uh, evolution in the context of interoperability um, we have uh, if you look at the um, the one city two city three city definition what it's really been doing is evolving from these you know, from technological silos and uh, government agency silos and uh, evolving into how, how are these uh, silos uh, now integrated in the context of the experience of the, of the uh, citizen or the uh, community of the city. And I think this is a highly complex issue. I think the internet uh, had some of these same issues uh, back in the beginning where there's there was networks before the internet, of course, there was lots of networks. And of course, these became integrated through the processes of standards and, and adoption of, uh, of an internet uh, architecture that allowed uh, technology to evolve uh, at different rates and still pr provide the same level of interoperability. Uh, then in the 80s, we saw, you know, if we went to 80s or the 90s, we saw the evolution of standardized uh, things like email, and, uh, and evolutions like that. And it became, again, we were integrating across domains. It used to be like we had in the private sector, we had manufacturing silos and we had uh, engineering silos and we had you know, uh, business silos and these all had different architectures and, and vendors. And, that, you know, and ultimately they became you know, uh, integrated into a standard set of solutions. That, 
that didn't preclude uh, you know people having uh, customization and and being able to uh, compete at different levels. But but we it, it focused on this integration. And of course, in the 2000s, uh, you know, 1990s uh, decade in the 2000s, we evolved from you know the web uh, standards and uh, and into the uh, into the application standards. And we're we're still evolving. But I think that's the point I'd like to make is that this evolution. I think we're seeing here is, is how we're uh, providing integration across the uh, various uh, functions of, of the uh, cities. Thank you, thank, thank, thank you very much. So uh, it's uh, it's a very interesting point of view. It's about integration among uh, among uh, I would say different standards. Yes, if I uh, understood correctly. Okay, so. Uh, 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 um, the same question: Where we are with the smart cities? I would like to to ask my uh, colleagues from 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 Poland. Uh, uh, Darek, could you please uh, your perf your perspective from from Polish perspective? How you do? How do you look at uh, at this uh, uh, smart city smart city context? Your perspective, please. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, it's it's it's. I think it's critical uh, question, and it's uh, and it's the most important questions. What is smart city? What is to be smart? What is the city uh, of, you know, of smart, I don't know, machines, people? We have to, uh, you know, get back a little bit to the definition. And I think to establish the, pla the platform for the people to engage. So the first question, what does it mean really the city which is smart? Um, is it only uh, uh, some mechanism or, as Len said, you know, some technical things uh, that should be implemented into the society to push them, to push people uh, to better life? Is it, you know, is it the question of better life or is it the question of better government, better governance, uh, better pu public affairs? Um, I'm still... As a former local government re representative, I had this 10 years uh, history in the in the Warsaw um, local government. I still see, and I'm not going to blame anybody because if, if there is any fault, it's equal to all of the politicians from, 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 from the list. But I would say that there is still uh, so much to do in this, in this area. And uh, I think uh, we see this uh, still here in pandemia time that we need to start from citizens and perhaps end with uh, technology. And on the way, we need, to, um, we need to face them and try to, uh, try to um, develop the best solution that we can deliver. I think that... Um, we need smart cities because, um, because you know, this is the city of the future. Um, it's, uh, you know, the city, the smart city is uh, an easier city to, to, um, to, uh, uh, to for, for the people, um, or for the citizens. Um, but I'm still afraid of the main topic that we are talking about, about the security, about the data, about all the things that are, uh, you know, behind the curtain um, and education. I think this is um, uh, this is the black hole of the whole system. No education about smart cities makes smart cities and as an as an idea very um, dangerous because it's quite unknown idea for the people for the ordinary citizens. So I think if you uh, Olaf, if you ask me where are we now, I would say. From the Polish perspective, from the perspective of the biggest and um, city, capital city of, of Poland, we are, I would say, uh, uh, in the very first moment. We don't have many, we don't have many um, many solutions. Um, I mean, I would say, and this is the last sentence that I would like to emphasize and underline here in this part. We need to start from the uh, from the people who have um, special um, needs, 
of from the city, from the government, from the local government representatives, and we need to hear them to implement the smart city they dream of. So that's my Great. story. Thank you, Derek, very, very much for, for, for your point of view. Uh, I think that uh, my thinking is that smart city is very much important for uh, for people who live in the city. So they give in, uh, they give ideas, they uh, invent ideas, they provide ideas to the city, and then it's developed. Conrad, I would like to to to, to if I may ask you not only the same question, but if you have a wider picture on on a smart city, because you. You are also involved very much in uh, smart city development idea in Jashuf. So, if you could provide your point of view, what the smart city is uh, today, uh, for example, from uh, from southern Poland uh, uh, POV. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, thank you. Actually, I agree with uh, Darius. Uh, uh, um, but uh, let me say to present a few sentences about smart city from the Polish city's point of uh, view. Uh, I have been working for uh, local government in my city for almost uh, 20 years now. I'm a head of the city council, um, but also I uh, belong to the group of experts uh, in digital transformation of cities. And for the last five, six years, I've been promoting the idea of smart city in Poland especially in Rzeszów, like uh, you said. After uh, the several years of trying and gathering experience, I have my own opinion on, on this subject. How far are we in Poland uh, from level 3.0 of smart city? Uh, nowadays, thanks to uh, the ongoing globalization and revolution in the methods of interpersonal co communication and uh, the speed of information flow, it, it, it is uh, possible to, to see the ideas uh, and projects of others. As for today, uh, Polish cities remain uh, in the group of cities uh, that observe the trends created in, uh, in Western Europe or in uh, cities from uh, all the world. Uh, of course, uh, our city uh, also trying to implement solution from the smart city area. Uh, we thought that uh, using experience from, from other cities uh, gives us uh, the opportunity to avoid possible mistakes made by pioneer cities. Uh, over the last five, maybe six years, uh, there has been a debate uh, in, in Poland about visions of smart uh, cities and, and, of course, versions uh, of smart city from one to three point, maybe four uh, point zero. Um, uh, we have learned about the advantages and disadvantages of version one or two. Uh, we have also learned about a certain uh, disappointment with, with purely technological solution. We also get to know uh, the vision of an almost perfectly city in version 3.0. So uh, we thought that our cities have just uh, such a chance to benefit uh, from the experience of Western cities and ja jump uh, straight into the level 3.0. However, it turned out uh, not to be an um, easy process. Why wasn't that simple? Uh, simple because the idea of smart city, like uh, Darius said, um, is a subject to some evolution. This evolution concerns social and technological process with which are evolving um, in parallel. And second, I think most important reason, our cities uh, need to create a culture of participation. Uh, so it turned out that we need more people awareness uh, and mutual trust that will help us to jump up to level 3.0. Some cities in Poland uh, thought that uh, when they had implemented the civic budget, for example, they were already there. The civic budget, I think, or even perfectly uh, conducted public uh, consultation are not enough to be 
smart city 3.0 without awareness and uh, properly educated and well established uh, culture of participation uh, it will not be uh, possible to create smart city 3.0 like a city co-created by citizens uh, this, cultures, this culture of, of participation cannot be achieved quickly. It's uh, quite a, a long process. First of all, I think uh, the first, the basic thing we need uh, in a small city in Poland to learn how to define problems. Uh, it turned out that it's very difficult skill. Uh, in Polish cities, um, uh, we are not yet able to, to name real problems and then indicate it. It's, uh, it's, it's difficult, we, we have to learn it. Uh, secondly, the city, our city, must change the way of communication. Smart City 3.0 is based on communication. Officials with uh, people, specialists with uh, officials, uh, citizens with each other, um, uh, sharing knowledge and innovative ideas. The dominant role should be played by dialogue, um, mediation, deliberation. Um, thirdly, we have to start building a dense and integrative participatory ecosystem. Involvement of the scientific community is a must, uh, as well as uh, involvement of NGOs, uh, businesses, then uh, wider groups of citizens, often informal. Uh, many citizens seem to be keen to participate in collaborative initiatives uh, only if they only uh, if they are, uh, are task based. Uh, so uh, the number of these uh, common and diverse activities must exceed and certain threshold. Uh, they must, of course, uh, be, be worried uh, and systematic, and uh, must concern real issues problems uh, and uh, needs. This uh, must uh, be bottom-up project uh, involving large groups of residents and uh, the aim of which is not uh, much to improve the city but uh, to transform it. Uh, like I said, uh, we must implement a sufficient number of these act uh, activities uh, uh, to build trust and to achieve uh, uh, synergy. Fourthly, the pandemic uh, has shown that uh, we need uh, to focus primarily on human and his will uh, uh, problems. Difficult topics and problems cannot be avoided. Uh, finally, the city administration has to adopt. Uh, this often requires uh, the courage of uh, city authorities who has to adopt uh, to the growing role of citizens. The cooperation between municipal administration and citizens will be better when administration will follow uh, the need of their uh, citizens. How uh, look uh, situation in Poland when we are where we are? <laughs> Uh, when uh, evaluating the current level of advancement of, of Polish cities on the road to the level 3.0, we should say that we are leaving uh, level 1.0 and we have more and more citizens, cities uh, uh, with smart cities 2.0 elements. Uh, like, for example, uh, commitment motivated by the inner conviction of president and majors in using modern technologies to increase the, the comfort of, of life of citizens. Uh, and we have uh, cities, the avant-garde of cities is trying uh, to reach level 3.0. But for now, these are only single projects, in the, in, only single, single solutions, I think. Mm, for example, uh, citizens panels in Gdańsk, Watch, or Virtual Warsaw, it was a very nice uh, project uh, and, and very modern. Uh, also a project Urban Lab Gdynia or Urban Lab uh, Rzeszów, uh, pilot project uh, when, when, when we learned to be a modern uh, city in Gdynia in, in Rzeszów. I know that there are already many initiatives on this type, 
but I want to say a few words about our uh, urban lab. Uh, why? Because uh, 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 Conrad, if I may ask you just to you know just to uh, uh, in a few words trying to to, to summarize your because we have uh, running out of time with our part. So uh, I have one more question to our panel. So if you could yes, just- Yes, of course. I like talking very much, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, this is your host speaking again. Sorry for interrupting you. I see there yes. are some questions in the chat panel. I would like to kindly remind the audience to use only Q&A feature for asking questions. Please do respect that. I am very sorry for interrupting you, gentlemen. Yes, thank you very much for reminding this. Uh, uh, okay, gentlemen, uh, I, uh, because uh, Conrad touched very, very important topics in, 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 his, uh, uh, in his words. Uh, one, one, uh, he mentioned one very important problem. So uh, uh, actually how to define the issues and problems within the smart cities, yes? How to respond to these problems? Who should do that and how should do that? And that leads me to, 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 to my second question, actually. I would like to ask uh, uh, Theo and Kilian. Uh, so, uh, because maybe, I, I say maybe, this is a kind of the, the, the response, because many experts say that data and data analysis will significant, significantly speed up the process of changing the cities into truly digital, yes? And before we do that, before they do that, and be, be, before, uh, um, uh my uh, before they uh what we should do maybe this way what we should do uh, in the smart cities yes uh, with your with your knowledge with your expertise uh even regarding the data we're going to talk uh, in this uh, in the second part uh so what we should do to, to, to become fully connected yes uh, is pass is uh, the vision of fully connected city uh is today possible? Is it something that we may consider? Can I start with Theo? Um, uh, thank you. Uh, that's a it's really interesting question and it's a pleasure to be there, here with you today. And um, I mean, I just to answer the question you were all mulling about what is a smart city, I mean, I think we can probably um, twist ourselves into knots coming up with the ideal definition of it. And it means different things to different cities. Uh, some people use the moniker smart cities to promote better services for citizens. Other, other ones focus more on a way of promoting their city for inward investment. You know, you have a smart district, you're on the map. So it uh, depends what your motivations are. And, you know, they're not mutually exclusive. Um, but in terms of like um, the the question about sort of the vision for the city being fully interconnected, it's certainly the case that cities are becoming more sensor rich environments. Um, the new developments that we will see in our city, the areas of London that will be built, the Royal Docks, for example, this big regeneration area will include the kinds of technologies that make even new bits of the city like King's Cross, where Google is building their headquarters at the moment in London, seem a bit old. Um, you know, that's the sort of stuff that will be built in the next two or three years. So I think, you know, in reality, I don't think we're going to have a, you know, unless you're kind of building an entirely new city <laughs> from scratch, which, which are kind of, I think, without being glib, I think there was the kind of promise of that when in the Sidewalk, Sidewalks Lab project in Toronto. I think you'll see a, a pretty much a sort of mixed economy. You'll see very sensor rich areas in, in new bits. And then you'll see, um, uh, in a sense, an approach in other parts of the city that will be sensor rich for certain things, certain projects. For example, meeting our citizens' concern about poor air quality or um, climate change challenges, which has consensus across corporate boards and city boards as well, will have, you know, there'll be an intensification of sensors for certain purposes. So, so I, think, I think the picture is a little bit more mixed and involves new and retrofit questions as well. Now, the interesting thing I'd say in closing is that the city um, 
the city has a real role in in this because the city is an active agent in the deployment of the of the new emerging technology stack that will enable a sensor rich city. Um, for example, uh, I mean, sensors exist without 5G. You know, you've got other forms of sensor networks that don't have to have 5G, but 5G is undoubtedly going to propel this forward. For 5G to work, you need to have a strong fiber infrastructure in your city because it's not standalone technology. And secondly, you need to have, in our case, hundreds of thousands of small cells in order to sort of amplify 5G. The biggest owner of properties and assets and fixtures in a city to deploy this is a city, <laughs> is the city government, whether it's schools or lampposts or public buildings. So, so cities, in a sense, have maybe some more agency in this discussion than in, and in previous technologies, because they, in a sense, are the physical platform that this technology will need in order for the data to be transferred. So I think that puts, um, that puts the question of governance much more to the forefront of uh, city leaders minds very very interesting thank you thank you so so, so much for this uh, 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 uh killian a few comments uh, from your side how it looks rough from from uh, from from you from your company point of view regarding the data data gathering and use of it later on in smart city development yeah <clears throat> so um um, yeah, just to just to uh, correct, I'm, I'm also uh, um, from the the um, yeah <clears throat> official side from the admi administrative administrative side, um, and um, um, what um, uh, back to your question. So um, you you ask what um, how important is the is the connectivity the word to be connected um, if you uh, if you look at a, at a smart city or a smart city vision yes in general yes the, my my question I, is uh, yeah. like uh, uh, in the essence like uh, can we do we think do you think that uh, a vision of fully connected city is a vision that will come through one day yeah um, it I think it uh, it will. It will come true on one day. Um, if you if you are a little bit more precise, and what do you mean by um, uh, what is connected, and what do you understand um, uh, under it? And um, um, what what I what I think is is really important to to, to keep in mind that um, uh, connectivity and sharing of data um, um, needs to be uh, done in a smart way to make sure that. Um, just the data is, is, is shared or, or connected to some entity which um, uh, needs the data and which has, uh, so to speak, the right uh, to access the data. Um, for example, if you if you if you look at um, at a yeah, smart city, what 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 do we understand under it? One one aspect could, for example, be e-governance. E so. Um, um, this is not the focus of, of my uh, everyday work, but um, you can you can think you can think about that um, uh, data you share with your public authority um, is something you uh, want to share with your authority, which one you want to control, have control who knows officially where I live and um, how old I am and um, um, that my identity is, uh, is, is, is so to speak me. And um, um, you want to make sure that at the end, uh, all background systems who, who gets this information uh, do that in a valid way. And uh, in order to, to do so, cybersecurity and technolo technology to, to, um, um, to ensure that the, the access to this, this data is, is done, in, done in a valid way is extremely important. On the other hand, you have um, these um, yeah, IoT infrastructure way of thinking where you see that, okay, we have pro probably some, some more public data, something like, oh, what, what temperature have we here and there? Is this uh, parking space occupied or not? Um, how is the air quality here and there? This is some, some, some different uh, type of data which needs some completely different uh, type of connecting and handling. And um, if, we, if we look, for example, um, um, okay, I want to talk a little bit more about how how these um, 
these 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 data is processed now and how this will be processed later when th things are more connected to to make a little bit more clear what uh, what um, um, this way of getting smart might be and and how this uh, security requirements um, uh, fill in there. For example, if you if you start with having a sensor on a parking space which um, says um, okay this park parking space is occupied or not, and you just have it's shown on an, on an application um, on your smartphone and where, for example, early adopters say, okay, I don't uh, look at, uh, don't park there where I remember I parked any time, I want to use these new features, then um, they, can, they can use the app. And if this, uh, this whole infrastructure fails, it's not really bad because uh, only the early adopters um, are affected and they already know where to park somewhere else. And, you can see that on, on, on traffic sensor. If you if uh, if you see if you use that sensor just for academic research purposes, and um, this sensor gives you wrong information, well, that's not good for your for your um, for your science. Um, but it's 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 not really really bad. But if you use the same kind of sensors later on, when you have a vision where everything is connected, you have intelligent transport systems um, which really work um, on, on on an automatic way based on this. Um, on this um, information, it, it, it really gets important that this, this information is um, yeah, transported and um, operated in a, in a valid way that you don't uh, create a mess on your, on your uh, traffic lights or, or traffic sign things. And what I want to say with that is that, um, that if, you, if you start getting more and more connected, if you start to get, you rely on, on, on technical infrastructure, if you, if you start to um, forget about analog ways of doing things, for example, where are the parking uh, spots or um, um, or things like that, then you um, are um, you rely much more on this technical infrastructure of being connected and that everything works valid. And um, so you you need to make sure that these infrastructures are secure and and work um, how they sh it should be. And there is it where cybersecurity comes in, which is important. Uh, thank you, Kilian. I, I basi basically, I believe that smart city is, is a city where we can live uh, uh, in a bit e easier way. Yes, it's a, it's a big city, so crowded places. I give you an example from, from Samsung that uh, when the pandemic started in, in, in Poland, uh, uh, in, in the city center, there were like uh, big, big uh, LED panels, and within a day, we could, uh, this is not, this is not, we are not the owner of this uh, LED panels, but we were a, a big advertiser on it. And uh, we gave to the public administration, I mean, we, we, we just uh, offered, okay, so we, you can display the communications related to, uh, to COVID-19 with the uh, DDM rules, so distance, disinfection and mask to all who will be in the city center. And, and I must say that with, uh, as it was located in the city center, we could immediately change the communication. Yeah? So this is quite smart. This was like immediate and, 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 and very relevant to the situation. So, so I believe that smart city is also kind of the city with the, with the, where the simple solutions can act uh, in the favor of, uh, of, of citizens. Yeah? So just with one click, I can change communication yes? about the uh, temperature, weather, smog, news, and uh, even cultural events. So I think it helps people live also, of course, sensors, data, and everything is important, but also simple solutions uh, from my perspective, what, uh, what also uh, 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 my colleagues, uh, we're saying from 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 Polish uh, from 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 Poland about how uh, Polish uh, cities can look like. Of course, we have great examples in Europe, uh, in London, Barcelona, uh, uh, Berlin. Uh, I think that the, these are the the, the European most uh, uh, smart cities. But uh, uh, thank you very much for your contribution to the smart city definition and the vision and how it will uh, uh, look like in the future. But. This is only just the beginning because uh, I believe that uh, there are much, much more challenges uh, uh, ahead of us related to the smart city data. As you mentioned, all, almost all of you, uh, that smart city is not only, uh, it, it's, it, it's also um, a big challenge. So Maciek, uh, because your part now right now starts uh, and uh, one of the biggest challenges is the, the data security, security in the smart city. So uh, if you could take a lead, please. 
Thank you, Olaf. Uh, thank you for this interesting introduction about smart cities idea. Uh, thank you for all panelists. Now I'm, now I'm sure uh, uh, it, was, it, it was right idea to arrange the panel consisting of uh, ideological and technical part, but uh, now I'm sure we, we, we need to arrange separate sessions on the idea and on the technical issues, especially security. Thank you, Olaf. Um, yes, uh, um, uh, we were talking a little bit about some tense between technology uh, and uh, citizens' needs uh, about um, about idea of implementing the city of dreams of citizens uh, and uh, and how to push people to better life. There are some notes from the first first part of of the panel. Uh, my question is uh, a general question. Uh, if we if we have uh, people um, smart enough, um, educated enough. Uh, to be able to push them to not only better, but also secure life. So uh, I will now move quickly to the second part, um, more technical one, uh, focused on security issues, security, cyber security in area of smart cities and various services. Mostly, but not only from the point of view of the technology. So let me ask the first question to Tio Blackwell, uh, Tio, it's good that you are with us. Tio, um, the London is pointed to be one of the leaders in smart city implementation, and we also follow UK approach to cybersecurity. So could you please uh, point in a few words what cybersecurity aspects were taken in consideration while planning and transforming um, London to digital world? Um, thank you. Um, well, I mean, London's sort of smart history goes back some time. I mean, it's about 20 years ago that we introduced the congestion charge, which is effectively a camera system that takes your vehicle registration number if you drive into certain parts of the city and charges you some money for it. And that's a uh, that's been sort of widely sort of accepted and adopted, and other smart initiatives in London from them from then have mainly been around the field of transport. So you could say for a citizen that having an Oyster card, which replaced a ticket, or even when moving from the Oyster card to now a citizen can move around the city using contact contactless travel. So they just pull out their card pays for a journey, reduces people's queuing, gets them in and out of the tube network, which is quite, well, was quite congested. So, um, you know, the kind of change has been that we've gone from, in a sense, a conception of big systems, smart city interventions from the transport network, um, which have applied to all Londoners and visitors, to piloting smaller scale, uh, initiatives, so e-mobility, uh, energy saving systems, etc., through our project Sharing Cities, uh, which was is funded still by the European Commission for the time being. Um, so um, I think the challenge um, there is how do you ensure that you don't get carried away too much with the idea about what you're delivering for citizens to neglect the fact that this will be part of an ecosystem and therefore you must have um, really good principles around data, really good principles around cybersecurity. Now more recently in the United Kingdom, I say recently over the last six months, the government has taken a great deal of interest in um, what cities are doing in terms of the development of smart technology and linking them up with agencies such as the National Cyber Security Centre, um, which is the government agency on, on cyber security. And I think there was a, there was a particular um, rise in interest over this from the government's stance on Huawei about five or six months ago. Um, so I think the future, 
that we're developing is um, is now emerging from from a kind of field of lots and lots of pilots everywhere to one where there's actually much more expressed national interest in introducing standards if these are going to scale up more than just on a pilot phase. So in summary, uh, I think we have, um, you know, we've got a shift from, um, you know, sort of uh, a traditional smart city, London wide platform with sort of fair amount of investment from transport authority with specific, you know, security standards wrapped around that to a more broad, bro uh, a broader approach, looking at the much more vast potential of smart city technology in our daily lives, which the government, um, which, you know, which, in which cities will be working much more closely with the government on those standards. And I think, sorry, if I can just make one more, one more point here, I think, I don't think we should underestimate the kind of, not just legal, but kind of, but ethical um, obligations that are imposed by the GDPR laws, because a lot of the things that public agencies are required to do in GDPR are actually ones that are quite good practice in cybersecurity and being resilient. And so an interesting point here for innovators working within the GDPR framework is that if you kind of think about it more than just doing the letter of the law, but living the spirit of GDPR, you're actually making quite good foundations for responsible technology growth, um, which should go some way to reassure citizens that the technology that you're putting in place will at least have, um, I say at least, but has a strong framework around privacy and good data maintenance and sharing standards that, um, uh, and and of course te you know and the central and of course the central tenant of GDPR being able to tell people what your data is used for. So I, I think that creates quite an interesting moment here that wasn't reflected in the initial discussions around GDPR, which just sort of saw it as some way, maybe some sort of onerous regulatory burdens, but actually a really good foundation for future progress um, across Europe. Thank you. Thank you, Tia. This is a very interesting approach. Thank you for mentioning this uh, legal and ethical aspect of GDPR regulations. It's very important. Uh, let me uh, direct next question to Len. Also uh, referring to one of the questions I have seen in, in, in chat room. Uh, Len, we were talking recently about growing number of devices around us. Uh, how can we deal with the difficulty of maintaining, I mean, updates, monitoring of devices activity, ability to ensure proper and secure configuration? And the question, one of the question uh, is, aren't we creating a huge botnet of devices? What other challenges are in focus uh, in focus of U.S. State Department? Yeah, well, that's uh, that's a great question. One that I've uh, I've been really interested in um, as recent. Uh, I, I think a couple of comments. First of all, I'd like to back up uh, Theo's comments on uh, on uh, the data part of it and uh, being very inclusive in all the discussions around the broader sense of data. Um, but I'd like to start just answering your question. It's like, I think a key aspect of even the security and, and, and even the, the quality of the uh, smart city implementations, you really have a, have a handle on architecture. Uh, I think, uh, you know, sit, great cities that I've visited, you know, hundreds of cities in my career, uh, you know, if you have great architecture, it's, it, it, you notice it. I mean, you notice that there's an ability to integrate the services and integrate the architectures across the city, and that that's a that's a difficult task, and it's a, dif a difficult task in the in the digital domain as well as the physical domain. And one thing about smart cities is that you're integrating these domains, so the architecture becomes even more difficult. And I'll go back to the the, the introduction of all these devices. Um, we're used to you know in the, in the digital domain having devices that have you know that are personal and they have a life cycle of, you know, a few years, whether it's a smartphone or, 
or uh, whatever uh, that are computers, tablets, uh, game consoles, and everything. But now we're dealing with uh, with the introduction of devices uh, that uh, have a variety of life cycles. You could have uh, in a city, you could have life cycles from literally potentially you know hours uh, in the sensor world to uh, to something that has a you know fifty year life cycle. And so all of these present a challenge in the context of how that life cycle, uh, you know, it places a, 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 a problems in the context of security because are they updatable and and are, do you even know who owns them? You know, at some point they they become kind of orphaned out there. Uh, so so we're looking at you know you know a situation where in the past or recent past, you know, people might have. Uh, you know, one or two or five devices that are network devices that they would own. So now I think, you know, in some of my uh, uh, travels, I, most people have roughly, you know, maybe 20 devices, you know, if you're if you're a, an average citizen, you know, netizen of the world. Uh, I've got 70, you know, some people have more than that, I suspect. But it becomes a challenge. It's like, how do you how do you provision these things? How do you update them? How do you even identify them? And so I think uh, looking at the standards space on this, you know, there's been a lot of activity of looking at this area. Uh, in particular, I might mention uh, our uh, the or our Department of Commerce has a organization, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Most people refer to it as NIST, uh, which has a great some great framework and documents out there. Uh, most recently, uh, the 8259 document, uh, which you know you can find on the NIST.gov website, um, which talks about you know considerations for IoT devices, and this this goes uh, all the way through uh, everything from the semiconductor level through the network level through the data level, uh, and and these are all considerations, and you have to look at that life cycle as you know how can how can you look at the technology. Uh, roadmap on some of these things and how does that technology roadmap affect you know the the infrastructure uh, and security of the device so i think it's you need to be able to look at that in that holistic standpoint you know and how's it and how does it scale i, I might throw one extra point in that i've noticed uh, that the uh, that the pandemic has pointed out uh, is that uh, you know people really hadn't considered how much data flows up from all these devices uh, as opposed to the traditional is like how we were worried about getting our Netflix and our you know streaming data back down to us. And so one thing that you know all of a sudden uh, everybody's in their house and and they're they're producing uh, they're having to uh, produce uh, you know Zoom sessions or upload data from education sessions and they're finding out that boy we just don't have enough connectivity and bandwidth to do this going in the opposite direction. Now we're looking at, you know, you put 70 devices or hundreds of devices in some cases, maybe in the future, and they're all producing data. It's going to massively outproduce what people produce. So I think you have to be able to look at that in the context of the scale of what's happening out there and really get your architecture and your infrastructure in the place to be able to manage that and secure it. So uh, I think those are all considerations that you really have to sit down and and think about you know how the future looks because it, it these things last a long time. Thank you, Len. Uh, thank you for mentioning uh, as well NIST framework as um, one of the solutions. Uh, you, you have also mentioned in the first part uh, uh, need of integration of standards. I think it's very. Uh, uh, very important, not only on the state level, not only on European level, but on the uh, uh, whole world level. Yeah, to to to, to integrate uh, standards to refer to the same framework or the similar frameworks. Uh, let's come back to the Europe. Uh, I would like to ask a question to BSI Germany. Kilian, um, could you share with us BSI approach? To the security standards uh, that we should refer to, that we should be that uh, that should be followed while building um, secure services for smart cities, and standards that would help us to effectively assess and maintain security of smart cities. The question is especially in reference to your and BSI experience 
gathered from Project uh, Secure Municipal uh, Internet of Things infrastructure. Kilian. Yes. Um, so, yeah, um, just to, to, to give the audience a little bit of uh, um, idea of, of, of what, what this, the project you were mentioning is, is doing. So, um, what, what we are doing is we try to um, get contact with um, um, cities and, 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 and smaller, small, smaller areas who are having um, um, IoT infrastructures, which is like a little bit more the, 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 the technical IoT um, part of, of, of the smart city vision. And um, we ask them, okay, um, how is your, does your infrastructure look like? And what, for, what are the security measures you implement? What is the, the way you, you, you're handling your, your, your security? And um, to get an, get, get an idea what, what's really going on in the world and to, to, to see um, where, where we can, can help um, um, all the cities around the country a little bit more and to give them, them guidance. And, um, yeah, what we what we see there is that of course there exists a, a lot of standards um, for things, but um, if you if you now look at the at the um, at the approach how 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 these these, these projects um, are are going going ahead is that the, the people who who invent them to think about them um, they they try to 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 get the the people living in the cities together they try to to develop some use cases they try to um, to apply them, and um, the, the the approach which is which is done is is, is more a little bit functional based. So these are, um, as um, Theo Theo explained, um, in London a, a few years ago or more than ten years ago, these are these these pilot project um, things uh, going on. And we have we have um, different technologies which are which are which um, the cities try to use. Um, LoRaWAN, for example, is one and um, and of course, there there exists um, standards for such top technologies in the in the sense of specifications, but there are no no really standards that can be easy easily uh, um, read by some some people who who buy or, or services from someone to say okay what are the security requirements um, um, I need. Um, to have fulfilled, and um, this is a, a very, very, very difficult thing. Of course, there are like, like, like big, big, um, big um, documents. Um, for example, the the, the ISO twenty thousand oh oh one, which uh, tells you how to set up an information security management system, which is uh, normally used in in um, bigger, bigger um, enterprises or things like that. And they, 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 if you if you would use this this kind of um, Big, uh, big uh, standards. Then you could, in principle, derive your your own um, security requirements. But this is not not uh, what uh, what helps a, a, a small city um, who who has um, who, who who is uh, more in the stage of okay. I try to find something what what my what my the people who live in the country have really really need, and. Um, this um, this is uh, something we observed through this project, so that um, there exists a lot of standards which would, in principle, help um, the, the 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 cities to to get the uh, the infrastructures correct. But just if um, on the one hand the the people who are deciding this would uh, kind of know all these standards and uh, and know how to, to use them, which is uh, not the case for many people in the whole world because there are a lot of standards. And um, on the other hand, if you would uh, be able to buy products and, and services who, who comply to the correct standards who, or to, to comply to the security requirements the, the, the cities would, um, would have. And um, so, so we see um, um, at, at some point that um, there is um, a, a lack of standards which can be used by 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 cities and, and especially uh, small cities to to construct um, um, secure IoT infrastructures. And um, this is for the standard thing, but on the other hand, there's, uh, in, in, in my opinion, also um, an, yeah, awareness or an education lack all around our, our societies concerning cybersecurity. So this is not just uh, connected to uh, smart city, or this is uh, connected to um, 
our whole, our whole society, which makes it kind of difficult to get experts uh, to to have um, uh, awareness from desires that cybersecurity is important to 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 fast identify good solutions or not good solutions. And um, yeah, what what we now think is that what is important is that the um, at least from the city perspective, the officials who who um, order services, who, who buy infrastructure, that they know about cybersecurity, that they um, at, at some point um, um, learn how to manage these issues. Of course, these um, um, information security management systems, um, um, these approaches can uh, at some point be, be also used um, um, in, in such infrastructures and that these cities um, um, know what requirements they have on their IoT infrastructure. In order to know this, they would, would have to know okay, what data is it um, we, are, we are using, we are, we are gathering, how do we use the data? And this is also a process which is not static. Um, as I, in my, my earlier example said, okay, if I use the sensor this way um, on one day, and this is if I use the sensor another way at um, day 14, um, this might have completely different um, requirements on, on my um, security architectures. And so um, these are, um, yeah, things, um, the, or this knowledge and, and, and awareness which have to be spread around um, the world, so to speak. And um, on the other hand, um, you would then um, find, okay, um, if, I, if I know what products I want to buy, if I know um, what, um, what security requirements I have on my products, then I have to find something who can deliver me such products. And um, if, you, if you don't have any high requirements, uh, then I think the market is, is, is good. You can, you can buy um, products who offer you some functionality but it's, it gets harder if you, if you have some um, security requirements and if you want to have um, some guarantees that these security requirements are, are filled, for example, by a third party certification or something like that. And I, and I think it is um, um, our, our task to, to provide um, security standards for, for different solutions that can be used by city officials to to um, be referred um, when they, they buy products um, and um, on the later maybe also um, offer certification schemes um, that um, it, is, it is easy for an official to identify, okay, this product um, um, satisfies my requirements or not. Thank you, Kilian. Uh, some important uh, points that uh, um, I, will, I will return to the certification in a while, thank you for uh, uh, mentioning education and, and awareness. I think it's also the question uh, if the smart city implementation is technology driven or the needs and awareness driven. So, so if we know what services do we really want to implement, that's, uh, that's much easier to estimate their sensitiveness uh, and security requirements, not basing that we implement what is just on the market because it's new and, uh, uh, and fantastic. Thank you. Um, I'd like to, um, well, it's not a small city uh, <laughs> because Rzeszów is quite a huge city, uh, but uh, let's go for a while to Poland. Mm, uh, Konrad, uh, the question is uh, if you can point some challenges of security that you can see from your city perspective and, uh, and about your needs. What does local government need to implement secure services? Maybe it would be easier to answer in the future uh, what should be the um, security requirements framework for cities of various size. Uh, thank you, Maciek. Uh, Zeshov, um, it's not so big. We have only oh, yes. 100,000 uh, citizens. We, uh, we said that uh, we have a compact city, so not so big, not so small. Mm, uh, and that's why we can better see, uh, that, for example, uh, effects of, uh, of uh, smart city projects here in Zeshov. But uh, if, we, if we talk about cybersecurity, uh, let me say 
a few words from a non-technological uh, member of city council. Um, uh, for us, uh, uh, the, the, the most important uh, word is awareness, like Kilian said. Uh, when we are talking, for example, about Smart City for Zero or policy open data, uh, we know that in Poland is still a dream, I think. Uh, we, have to, we have to learn how to open our uh, data and uh, we have to uh, build our awareness. Awareness uh, in administration, but also in, uh, in our uh, city councils, uh, by our presidents and, and majors. Um, so uh, uh, in, in my city, uh, <clears throat> for example, operates one of the most uh, modern Polish IT uh, system. And uh, when we are talking about uh, systems uh, in, in city, and we have to say that um, uh, 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 we, need, uh, we need support, uh, the management of, of uh, uh, our city. Uh, and uh, we have to remember that uh, our systems are very closely uh, interconnected. So uh, when we are uh, thinking about uh, cyber security, we need to protect, protect uh, these systems uh, together. For example, is it uh, impossible to effectively um, protect public transport against cyber threats uh, without talking about, uh, without taking uh, into account uh, in uh, its interaction with the city's energy, telecommunication, and public safety systems. Um, so we need, uh, like I said, awareness. We need awareness about uh, uh, cyber security. But second important word, uh, uh, what we need uh, in small cities <laughs> when we are talking about uh, smart city projects and cyber security. Uh, we need standards. Uh, it's very important for us because we would like, for example, uh, uh, testing uh, autonomous buses, but we need uh, technical infrastructure, we need uh, 5G technology, but uh, first of all, we need uh, standards for, for, for it. Uh, so uh, it's not uh, easy uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, cyber security in, in our uh, in, uh, city council, but we know that now in this time we need uh, we need uh, this, uh, this this standards. Also, uh, we need uh, people uh, who, who who can make it in, in administration, but it's another big uh, theme. Thanks. Thank you, Konrad. Um, yes, education, but not only education of uh, the, on the level of citizens, but also uh, probably the necessity of education of a large amount of security specialists that can advise us as well on the on the level of, of, of citizens like like on the um, well, cities and, and people responsible for implementation of services. Uh, now I would like to um, continue technical part, but uh, uh, also with some strategic issues. Um, I think it's very important we, we are touching this topic a little bit. Uh, probably in each of your um, of your voices, but uh, let me ask uh, Darius um, about uh, well, some controversial or not controversial question. Should public administration, uh, I mean more uh, state level, but also on a local level, have influence? Maybe influence regulated by law on security requirements for services delivered for smart cities by both public and private sector. 
You should. Yes. Un- that, thank oh, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you for the question. I think. Well, I, I'm from from my own pers- perspective as a lawyer. I would say yes. I mean, uh, I mean, law is not the 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 um the vehicle that uh, we can uh, solve all the problems, but it's all, uh, but you know from from the many perspectives, it's really um, useful to have unification. And as we see in Poland, as Konrad mentioned, this is very uh, interesting thing that we have so many cities that have their own um, urban labs, uh, some uh, small or bigger actions due to smart cities, but there is no unification. Um, I think that even there is no unification within one city, which means that um, telecommunication uh, system is not connected to the bus system. Bus system is not connected to metro or subway. Subway is not connected to the train system. And all these things uh, makes, uh, you know, uh, um, raise the question how to make it. And I think if the local government is unable to, to uh, go with the problem, I think the, 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 the government should uh, help and what I'm scared and what I'm um, uh, concerned about is that we will have a hundreds of cities with their own independent systems that are not connected to other uh, because they are not able to, I don't know, to, to connect, to, to talk about it, to uh, share uh, problems. Um, so I think that uh, the government is not the answer for all our questions and for all our uh, uh, sicknesses or diseases, but it can help with this unification. But if you can, if I can, Machi, uh, just get back to one question that was, uh, I think that the, 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 the issue was raised with, uh, by uh, Kilian and Theo. I think that, um, uh, that this uh, ethical question and the data question and the question of citizens, what's in return, the, the business needs our data <laughs> to, uh, to, you know, to go with the, with the business to earn money. But uh, normal and uh, uh, normal uh, citizen bystander ha- need to have the opportunity to ask what for, what's, the, what's on stake, what's the security issue, uh, what about the yeah, what, what about my data? Um, should I give you this? Should I pass you this? Um, all these questions are, I think, very fundamental for smart cities because if we don't have an answer for these fundamental questions, we will not engage people to the smart city projects. So that, as Conrad said, uh, city, city smart three zero. Is the the idea of um, of the dialogue with the citizens? So uh, the dialogue, it's uh, it's the it's the institution that needs two sides, and one side is always scared and concerned about data, and the other side is uh, interested in the data, and we need the platform to education and awareness i think that the i think that the local government and the city council members and the activists and the yeah the city activist has the right to raise the questions about the security of our data because the smart city idea is the is the idea of the data as a fundament of it so i think don't want to dodge from the from the primary question, but I want to just comment on that issue because I think it's it's critical and it's really really important for normal citizens to, to be, that they need to be sure uh, what's on stake and what's in return. It's so transactional, but it's so obvious. So that's my that's my answer to the previous question. And 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 the answer for the for the Mike's questions on on on, on the last uh, issue. Thank you. Thank you, Darius. Uh, I see there are not so many questions on Q in Q and A panel. I see one. Uh, if there are no more, uh, we will use some time for. 
other questions to panelists who we will try to answer the your questions at the end of the session uh, which is quite near unfortunately uh, but thank you also for exchanging um, informations and links uh, uh, on uh, social chat so um, coming back to to the questions uh, uh, the question goes to Len. Uh, I did uh, want to ask you about some uh, uh, the supply chain security and integrity aspects, but uh, we will go probably more in legislation. So, so coming back to the technical aspects, uh, um, uh, have you any? Uh, any opinion uh, about the state regulations uh, in technical issue like in the world of uh, mentioned before thousands of devices, logins, passwords around us, how to provide easy and citizen friendly identity management? Is it the duty of the state? Um, this, this is a fantastic question. Uh, in fact, some people have asked me, you know, as kind of like a uh, an elder statesman of the internet, I guess, <laughs> looking at this, is like, what what do I see in the next, you know, decade uh, as being the challenge here? And and uh, you know, I've thought about that a lot. And one uh, the the word I keep boiling down to is trust. Uh, I think uh, we are going to see a decade now where a lot of these um, questions. Uh, and how things get adopted uh, and how things get legislated are, are, gonna, are going to revolve around this question of trust. And I've got a specific, and it's a complex question. I'm, you know, it's a simple word, but a complex answer. And, um, you know, I mean, companies deal with this in terms of their brands and cities deal with this in terms of, you know, their, their environment and their, and their reputation. Uh, governments deal with this question. So I think, you know, the bottom line is, I think, when we talk about it in the context of cities, is uh, you know, how do we engage uh, all of the stakeholders here and uh, that revolve around this question? Uh, and so, I think it's critical that that uh, we bring together the the national and the regional and local people, and they and they because this digital space that they're going to be living in, uh, you know, is. I mean, they have the same issues in the physical spaces. Do they do they trust the environment that they live in? And and these are these are services, goods and services that are going to be integrated into people's lives, and they're going to you know not only deal with security, but it's going to be privacy. It's going to be human rights. Uh, these all have to be considerations, and the only way you can do that is uh, is through through a dialogue of uh, of inclusion uh, in this space. The the uh, to get around to some of the supply chain discussions, I mean, you have to be able to look at risk uh, and and how risk is uh, holistically looked at and and managed. Uh, we, you know, at the government level, at the U.S. government level, um, we do a variety of things. Uh, for one thing, at this, you know, for instance, the State Department, we do uh, discussions around capacity building. You know, international capacity building, and and we we not only capacity building in the context of you know. Um, what we look at uh, in terms of other countries, but we also look at within our own uh, within our own State Department and how we bring our diplomats up to speed on some of these issues. Uh, at, at the national level in the U.S., we have a uh, cybersecurity and infrastructure uh, a security agency, CISA, which is part of Homeland Security, and and they get involved uh, with a variety of, of issues across the board. Uh, in fact. I think uh, going back and looking at uh, something, one of their more recent activities, I'm sure you've all heard about this, it's election security. Is like, how do we engage these hundreds of, of, uh, of constituents uh, that manage elections around the United States and how do we put them in, 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 into a environment where issues can be brought up to speed uh, really quickly and dealt with and standards can be looked at uh, in terms of what, what can be brought into the uh, equation. And, and that, but that agency uh, applies across all the domains. I mean, you know, they, whether it's energy domain or, uh, or uh, healthcare domain, because this is how 
the integration and in, in the security s- section works is that you might have a, 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 a vulnerability in one domain, uh, say healthcare, that very quickly translates over into the energy domain because of the interconnectedness of this. So you need to be able to take a broad look at this in terms of how you legislate. And you can't legislate in the context of one area without you know, dealing with the, the, the ramifications in another area. And that applies uh, you know, pretty much across the board. And I think, so putting in place these, uh, these uh, government infrastructures that can deal with these interconnected uh, and risk management issues uh, very quickly and, uh, and build capacity across your uh, cities and, and communities is a very, uh, very uh, key aspect of this discussion. Thank you, Len. Uh, thank you, Len. It's very important. Uh, if I can go with next question to London, Theo. Uh, the question is, uh, it will consist of two parts. Uh, one question is, you have mentioned uh, a little bit about it uh, in, uh, in previous questions. Uh, how are you supported by UK and CSC? Do you base on central agency guidelines in security? Um, maybe there is uh, some specific UK regulation supporting your actions on city level. And then the second part, I will uh, push to you the question from the Q&A chat. Um, uh, the second part of the question is, how can we improve the adoption of uh, the already published security standards? It is a job for industry, government, on, or civil society. Thank you for the question uh, to, 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 to the audience. The audience. Right. I mean, I think um, just just going back to, I just I thought Len um, just made some really, really important points um, just going back to after I spoke before about understanding the architecture that puts the city together. And quite often you know and unsurprisingly that's a question that technologists city technologists have been talking about but politicians less so because there's quite a distance between the language of running a city um and the language of cyber security and so we've been doing quite a lot of work in london because of course london is we're the strategic authority at City Hall, much like a, a regional government in in Europe, state government in, in the United States. Um, and below us sit 32 local authorities governing a pop- average population each of about 250,000 people. So cities in their own right. And they've each got their own independent technology record. Um, so we went about trying to understand that. Okay, what are the functions of local government and what technology supports that? Now, you would have thought this was a kind of question for central government. You know, if you ask someone in central government, what technology supports the delivery of hundreds of public services from social care through to uh, waste collection uh, to your citizens? What's, what's the technology estate to start the conversation about what you think the mix should be and the question of standards? Uh, in a lot of places in the world, that that conversation hasn't happened. That there isn't, there's an approximation. There's not a full knowledge. When do the contracts run out? Whose contracts are those with? Uh, So we've developed a platform called 33, uh, which was with a a startup uh, and it ingested lots of data from our local authorities. So for the first time, we do have a knowledge of our technology estate. And I think that's, that's now a civic question. It's not just a technology question. So our civic leaders need to have a discussion and come to a view about the direction of travel of their collective technology estate and a knowledge and awareness of that. So I think that's really important. Um, I th- so turning to, the, turning to the issue of NCSC briefly and, the, and, and also the adoption of standards. Um, so we... we, we we're in conversation with with the NCSC and they've been very very helpful um, uh, this year uh, because of course uh, cities have to be very aware of cyber attacks that might take down infrastructure and I think you know the cyber attacks we're talking about are not so much what we've been sort of mulling on of like do you have um you know can someone take over your drone network you know <laughs> or 
if you have one, you know, or, or uh, you know, if you introduce new technologies in the future, are they more vulnerable? What we're talking about here is, is that cities are built on a lot of legacy systems, legacy systems that have data about where vulnerable people live or pay, give payments to people um, or businesses. And the threats that um, outdated um, software and infrastructure pose. So, you know, we work very closely with NCSE. They've got a local government department. Um, and I think that the, my, my observation was right at the start that there needs to be a much clearer picture to those who do administration locally not just in the UK, but elsewhere, about what the government is seeing in terms of the threat picture and the threat landscape. And quite often, because these are done by national agencies that are very, um, you know, specialised and report up to central government, that that information isn't necessarily shared. And ironically, the knowledge of how to share that with many different parties like people in local government dotted right across the country is seen as a bit risky. Whereas we're saying, well, if you tell us a bit more about what the threat picture is, then that allows us as municipal practitioners to then go to the city government saying, you need to build a business case to stop these sorts of things happening. So the information flow between what the national government is seeing on a cybersecurity level and a local government level, I think is really important and needs and really needs thinking about, right, uh, you know, wherever you live. I don't think it's a particular issue that we've picked up. And by the same token, we talk about public engagement. Look, I can go to a crime dashboard that we produce and I can tell you about violent crime in London and tell you about uh, arson um, and talk about, you know, threats against human being and you know, physical violence, etc. Um, I can even tell you about automobile theft on a monthly basis on a nice dashboard. I can't tell you about the number of cyber attacks that have gone off in London, even though the agency dealing with local cyber attacks is based in the police in London, because we don't publish the data in that way. So we need to think about how we report. So journalists can pick it up and we can have a public discussion about it. We need to have report publicly about the incidents of things as opposed to how we receive it now is a big report when something really bad in one place happens. Thank you, Theo. Uh, I, I think it's, it's a, a nice conclusion then to say that in, a, in the time when we are implementing sophisticated uh, technology, we need to focus on normal communication uh, on the, a transfer of information. Yeah, uh, we are almost run out, run out of time, but uh, mm, uh, I'd like to ask last question of, with uh, uh, probably for one minute. Uh, Kilian, uh, could you tell about the role of BSI in creating security fra framework for smart cities, especially in the context of certification? Uh, if one minute is enough, floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. <clears throat> so um, what uh, the BS, BSI um, is, is um, it's, a, it's, it's an, uh, uh, yeah, place where you can, can get certif certification for your products from. And um, um, what um, we now aim for um, is to, to support uh, the European Commission um, in, in establishing uh, mm -hmm. Um, the, the cybersecurity framework, a certification framework, which um, and it tries to to harmonize um, the, um, the 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 yeah the <laughs> framework for for certifying products all, all over Europe, uh, to ensure that the European uh, market is harmonized and that um, 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 statements about statements about um, um, security guarantees for, for products can be um, used all, all over Europe. Thank you, Kilian. Uh, it's almost over. We have started two minutes later than we were suspected. 
<laughs> so, uh, Olaf, if we can uh, just uh, take the last two minutes for a short uh, summary. Can you start, please? Yes, yes. Uh, of course, thank you very much all for your, uh, for your participation and uh, for what you uh, said. Uh, just uh, just a few points. I made a uh, uh, few notes from from you were from what you were talking about. Uh, uh, I just would like to underline that uh, one uh, in the smart city one we have to uh, define uh, define the problems in terms of what we are looking for, what we want to resolve. Uh, the uh, uh, the sensors and data is not everything. Yes, we need to also work on uh, 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 how to utilize it well. Yes, and then we have all these uh, cybersecurity issues. Uh, also uh, worth to uh, uh, mention that we are looking for the uh, standardized solutions. Yes, uh, that we can link with the smart uh, with the smart solution and then in, in, implement. Uh, 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 also, uh, important is that uh, uh, we uh, are looking for the smart cities um, uh, that actually pe people won't like to uh, live in. Yes, not the, the the cities we would create just like that, but people. That really uh, uh, that it responds to their needs. I, I talked already about, it, but it, it 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 repeated. And also, we need to focus on building uh, uh, ecosystems uh, because it is also very uh, important. Uh, then, uh, uh, so how to adopt? Uh, how the administration has to adopt to the growing needs uh, of, of 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 citizens. That's also very important. And and. And role modeling, what you mentioned uh, uh, in his in his uh, few words. So, so this is this is a, a few points from from my side. But I would like to uh, thanks again for the really uh, interesting uh, conversation uh, I had uh, with you, and then I could listen to uh, what uh, Maciek was uh, talking about. I think that we are. Ahead of us, lots of challenges. Yes, uh, and uh, that we'll have to address in terms of not smart city, but but challenges related to cyber sex standards, uh, protocols, and uh, and many others. So from my son, big thank you uh, for this, Maciek. Uh, now, so so last half of the minute for me, uh, just to mention uh, integration of architecture, security architecture. Uh, transmission of the standards to local government uh, showing the ways of implementation of existing standards maybe it's a question for us to uh, to meet again <laughs> and um, to discuss more uh, together with samsung electronics polska we we plan to uh, make a summary of this uh, of this panel so uh, so Probably we will publish the document with with short summary, asking our panelists to for their contribution. But uh, now I think uh, we need to finish this uh, excellent panel. Thank you, thank you all the all the panelists. Um, thanks to Len House, Theo Blackwell, Kilian Mitteweiga, Darius Lesowski, and Konrad Fiołek. Thank you very much. And many thanks for all the audience and all the suggestions, exchange of thoughts on the social part of, uh, of chat room. Uh, thank you for the questions. If any more questions will appear in the future, you can find us probably somewhere in the internet or in, by emails. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, IGF um, organization and uh, have a good afternoon or good night or start the day. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. This is your IGF host speaking. Thank you for your participation in the IGF 2020. Please leave your feedback through the form. You will be automatically redirected to after closure of the session. Thank you very much.